All right, episode two of Making Hay. We are getting ready to rake the fields. So it has been a couple days, a few days actually. It's been three days since we cut, and uh, the hay has been just sitting here. Uh, what I like to do is just leave it sit uh, unraked in the field, and you can see that the grass underneath it has started to grow up, um, probably about a half an inch to an inch from where we cut it. And that actually helps lift this hay up off the ground just a little bit. Some of the leaves on the top are brown. They're a little bit fragile, but they're still holding to the stems good enough. Um, but uh, the stuff underneath it is still nice and green. Now this needs a little bit longer to dry out. So what we're going to do is get out here and rake all this up. Now this is a real thin cutting, my last third cutting of the year. So what we're using to make the uh, the windrows or rows is this John Deere. Uh, it's what I call a roll rake. I don't know the, probably the accurate name for it, but the, this is a roll rake. Basically it's ground driven and it catches the hay with all these little uh, fingers or teeth here and tines and uh, it's on an angle here and it's spinning backwards from the way that you're going so it lifts the hay up and it pushes it off to the side into a roll that ends right at the edge of the uh, of the rake here and it's all ground driven so there's no PTO or anything to hook up all you do is lock these little wheel um, locks in just twist them around there's one on the other wheel here and that engages the wheels and this little axle here and it uh, engages and locks in this uh, this wheel here and that actually drives a, a belt or a chain inside here and then it's a little um, you know almost like a PTO shaft a little universal shaft uh, that spins the rake Alright, so we've got everything greased up here, and this doesn't have too many grease fittings on it. Um, just uh, the center joints there, the center shaft, and then all these uh, U-joints going around here. So, um, pretty easy to uh, get ready to go with this one, but we always grease every time I use it. So, another thing I like to do is just check over the teeth. Uh, I've got a couple that have broken off here, so looks like I'm missing one right here. So these are actually pretty easy to replace. You see I've got a few new ones on here. Um, I actually really prefer these metal ones, but I haven't been able to find the exact same ones. They have a special kind of a bend on the inside of these here. And I know they, I know I can get them at TSC probably, um, but the ones that they had at Family Farm and Home weren't, weren't correct. So nice little trick when you're hooking this equipment up is get real close to your hitch or your three point uh, whatever piece of equipment and then stick your bucket down, uh, turn it and stick it directly into the ground and the, ed the edge of it right into the ground and then what you can do is you get real close and then you can use your your bucket to uh, just tilt it this way a little bit to pull yourself forward or this way a little bit to push yourself back and then you can adjust that real fine increments to get right underneath that pinhole so um, just a little tip that uh, works really well so just a little bit about what I'm doing and how I do it. So generally I run the rake pretty fast especially in this light of hay. Uh, I might even pop it into road gear, fifth gear and uh, run full throttle with it. Uh, you can go pretty quick with this thing. Uh, it doesn't seem to hurt the rake. Maybe a little harder on it, but, uh, but it can handle some John Deere. So uh, what we're gonna be doing is I'm gonna go around the field and I, I kinda, I guess I'd best describe this as zipping and unzipping. Uh, we're gonna start around the field in a counterclockwise manner and that is gonna rake the grass and hay in from the edge. Uh, I want to get it away from the shade, so I've got all these trees along the edges here that are shading that first uh, couple rows. So we're going to rake three passes in, and that'll be our first windrow. And then I'm going to start a new one, and we're going to go around two times, maybe three, depending on how thick the windrows are. So we're going to kind of zip up this field. We're going to be going around counterclockwise. We're going to rake the hay kind of close into the middle, and we'll have like a, a center kind of uh, windrow. And then what I'm going to do right before I bail, um, probably tomorrow, I'm going to come out here and I'm going to unzip it. And I'm going to go around in the opposite direction, and I'm going to knock those windrows just over one time. So we're going to take the windrow, and we're just going to toss it over. Uh, I've got some video of this that I did earlier this year, but all you do is just tap it, tap that windrow with the end of this rake, and it just grabs it and flips it one time over. So anything on the bottom is now in the sunshine. Get nice and dried out and ready to bail. So one of the things that I learned right off the bat was 
the manual will tell you you want to adjust this rake as level as possible so you want all these teeth to kind of touch the ground at the same exact time that's going to pull your hay and get you know you leave less hay in the field so you want to make sure that they're not hitting the ground too hard you break your teeth off but they got to be touching the ground just enough to make sure they flick that hay right out of the off the ground and, and get it rolled up and, and uh, in that windrow for you so uh, we're going to go ahead and get this adjusted really quick down to the ground as close as we can get it um, just so those bottom teeth touch and then we'll get on and ready to go. It is hot out here in this field today. Uh, it, it feels like it's 100 degrees, but it's only in 80 supposedly. But once you get out in the sun, it's beating off the field, it's beating off the sun, and man, it's hot out here. So uh, we're gonna get on this tractor, get some wind going, and, uh, and get, this thing, uh, get this thing started. Doesn't take too long. This is about a four and a half acres. I got this main field I showed you, and then around the corner, I'm gonna zip this all into one a continuous kind of uh, uh, L-shaped circle if you if you will it'll kind of be continuous so when I get the baler out I'll be able to just follow that trail right around that windrow and and bail it all up in one kind of loop continuous so And this is the finished product. Got some nice rows of hay here. You can tell this is this hay is pretty dry already. There's a kind of a good mix of some green stuff and some drier stuff in there. Uh, over the next day, this will this will dry out real nice. And um, anything that's that's wet or greener like this stuff will will dry out. And we'll end up with a real nice mix. You don't want it to be, you know, dirt ash dry and then it all breaks apart and you, you don't have anything left. You want the moisture content to be low enough where we don't have any mold or mildew issues in the bale, but uh, we don't want it to be, you know, too wet or too dry. It's got to be kind of just right. And so this is pretty close to ready, but, uh, you know, good, nice and full day of, of sunshine. And uh, well, this will be ready to run through the baler. Well, that is it for episode two of making hay, uh, raking our hay today. And uh, this, uh, this hay is going to turn out pretty good. I, I love the third cutting. It's a much greener hay. It dries a little bit slower in the, in the cooler weather. Um, generally, it's a little more cloudy and, uh, and cooler during this time of the year in September here in Michigan. So uh, this should turn out to be pretty good hay. Uh, it'll be great for our goats and pigs. And I may even sell a little bit of this as well. So we've got a little extra. So... But uh, if you guys have questions about the process, I'd love to hear from you. Let me know what you think of the Making Hay series. Uh, baling hay will be coming up next with the old 
1955 Oliver Baylor. Always exciting to get that thing out and fire it up. And um, man, what a great little little piece of equipment that is. So uh, look forward to that uh, coming out here in the next week. And uh, lots of other good stuff coming up as we come into the fall here. Pumpkin harvest. They're ready. They're out there. Some of them are actually getting eaten. So I better get out there and get those pumpkins soon. Uh, look forward to that coming up here as well. So subscribe to follow along. As always, thumbs up on each video. If you're following along, man, if you could give me that thumbs up on the videos, that makes a big difference for me. So thanks for that. And as always, thanks for watching. Have a good one.